Hello and welcome to the Blitz Business Development Show. My name is Mayo Best and I'm a business consultant and coach as well as the founder of the Blitz Business Development Academy. This is the show that provides guidance, resources, and access to best practices to help you advertise, manage, and build geometric profits. From freelancers and home-based business owners to startups and storefronts, you will learn how to start small as you think and grow big. Hello, folks, and welcome to the Bliss Business Development Show. Hey, listen, in the advent of the pandemic, we have all been having to work at home, at least most of us, right? And at the end of the day, you can kind of get used to it, and maybe it works for you, and maybe it doesn't. But some of you have decided to stay home and start working from home now. What you're going to find if you're new to working from home is that one of the most difficult things to do is to be able to do things for a long period of time in the same room. Well, if you've got that challenge, if you have an issue to where you're just not really organized, you don't really work efficiently and things are all over the place, this is certainly the episode for you because... Today's show is about how to optimize and create the ultimate room or workspace, okay? So with that said, we're going to have a special guest here who does just that, but she's not just any type of like, say, organizer. What she actually does, she has this three-dimensional approach as to how you can basically optimize any workspace to its full potential based off of the outcome that you would like to feel. And get this, she even actually creates artwork, okay, based off of what you want to feel after you go through the process of decluttering and, you know, figuring out what colors. It's like this whole really cool concept that she has that I think is a game changer that hardly anyone is doing. So, We're going to meet somebody that's absolutely phenomenal at doing this. In just a moment, you're going to meet Gina Marie. As a holistic design consultant, Gina's focus is to bring peace and wholeness back into one's life by clarifying it through a mind-body-space cleanse. She's done a variety of projects, all to do with one's home environment, from a mural of a sunset off the coast of Maui to a completed renovation of a residential home. Gina has a bachelor's degree in interior design. She's certified in feng shui and re-green trained with the American Society of Interior Designers. She also has a master's in fine arts with the Eddie Olson Studios. Ladies and gentlemen, Gina Marie. So awesome. So Gina, where are you originally from? So I'm from the East Coast. I'm from Massachusetts. Okay. Been out in Vancouver, Washington for about 10 years now. Okay. Now, I want to know a little bit more about your upbringing. Now, what was it like growing up in Massachusetts? It was awesome. Um, being out here though on the west coast i would say well and my husband would say you know over there it's like being in little ant hills you know compared to over here you know i've got the huge mountains everything is more grandiose and there you know everything is comfortable but um no it was a, it was an awesome upbringing and i love nature and so i always got to play outside and mm-hmm. you know and it's just not like it used to be like, we, i was always playing with worms or playing with chalk or playing you know outdoors in the grass and the land and stuff and it's i don't know nowadays it's not like that anymore but enjoyed my upbringing very much are are you still kind of an outdoorsy type of person now do you still kind of like like to do those types of things i love kayaking and hiking yeah so this is why I, i guess the west coast suits me at this point okay Now, I'm curious about that because I spent some time on the East Coast as well. I'm sorry, I spent some time on the West Coast. I'm from the East and actually returned back to the East. I used to live in uh, Los Angeles for probably about eight or nine years or something like that. And I found it to be very um, different, (laughs) for lack of a better term. It's very different coming from the East to the West. And I'm just curious, artistically... Do you find that there is a little bit of a a difference um, in, I would say, our artistic approach from maybe the artists that you may have grown up with or maybe known from the East to the West? 
Yeah, I mean, there's a huge difference. Mm. I feel like this country is like cut in half, you know, and just there's even different language. You know, people say different terminology and you're like, where did that come from? And, and yeah, so I, I definitely noticed that. But even being so being out on the West Coast, I like I said, I think things are more grandiose and I just love it. And a lot of my art comes from, you know, nature. And mm. I think I was... <laughs> One day I was, I saw the moon and the sun at the same time. I was like, that is so cool. And I never, growing up, I'm like, I never saw that. So being here, I was like, are we closer to the sun? What is going on on the West Coast? It's just, <laughs> it's just brighter and just more, like I said, more grandiose, more rainbows. And just, so anyway, it's just, it's more spiritual. Um, yeah. And actually, that's what brought me to Portland. I mean, I live in Vancouver, Washington, but I was all like, I heard about, you know, Portland, Oregon, Portland, Oregon, very spiritual, very liberal, you know, that, and that's more my style. So, and very artsy, so very new age. And that's what said, oh yeah, I'm going to check it out, you know? So that's what brought me out here. Cause again, it's like, I love these coats, but yes, they can be very, they're very different. So I say that, you know, with my art, I, I bring in like my East coast architecture, because okay. the architecture here on the West Coast, to me, is kind of, I don't know, cookie cutter, very blah. So there's more authentic, you know, detail in the, well, in the property on the East Coast, just because it's, a, yeah, there's just more history. It's just older. Mm. Uh, you just get, yeah, more style over there than what I've noticed over here. But so I, I put together, I say, the architecture from the East Coast and the nature from the West Coast. I combine the two and then you ha I have my, my work. Yeah, I find out my artwork comes through that and my feng shui comes through that. And yeah, so it's, 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 a, it, it, it's helpful to have both backgrounds or both, you know, both interests and both, yeah, to okay. kind of balance it. <laughs> so as, as a child, at what point, or was it even as a child? I'm just curious. At what point did you decide that you wanted to go into, now was it art first or interior design? So, yeah, thank you, Mayo, for that question. I, so I grew up on the East Coast, but um, uh, there was like a lot of poor insulation in my home. And so that's what led me to get into interior design because I learned through research later on about like sick building syndrome. You know, people can get sick from toxicities in their home and, you know, syn yeah, synthetic materials and stuff that people don't even realize. Right. I mean, mm. there's been so much construction with all these homes that just go up, like, like I said, cookie cutter homes that just, and, and people buy them and just suck them up and they don't even know what they're really getting into. Right. So it, it, you know, to me, it's like, you should really investigate and figure out. And I, yeah, I'm all about designing my own home and getting it green, sustainable um, for the earth, but for your health, you know, so that's right. most important. So, yeah. So to answer your question, um, it was interior design. I think that fascinated me first and then, I said, but I love art, you know, I've always loved art. And I was like, okay, let's see. I'm going to just, you know, be an artist on the side. So, you know, when I was younger, cause I've always just, I've just been doing art since I was a child. Um, but, you know, interior design was a little more practical, you know, when I was a child. Uh, but now, you know, I'm able to encompass both together nicely. So with my feng shui and the interior design and the art all at one. I mean, I know that a lot of times they say that, you know, they use form and function, but it sounds like almost you started with function because of the insulation. And is, is that what really, would you say that that's where you, everything that's started? Kind of, yeah, it drove me to want to study interior design when I, yeah, growing up. Mm. Uh, I think because I got certain allergies, you know, from the poor insulation, uh, yeah, in the home. Right. So, yeah, it was, um, you know, I think on the east side of the house, there are too many trees blocking the, yeah, the structure of the house. So there wasn't able to get enough light through and there wasn't able, mm. you know, I could never dry out, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I definitely, like I said, I developed the allergies because of all that poor insulation. 
Did anyone else in your home get sick as well? Or was it just mainly you? No, it was just mainly me. It's actually my bedroom was on that that far east corner. And so that's where the uh, the, the worst part of it, I guess, was. I Yeah, because nobody else that I know of really developed anything. Um, yeah, because yeah, my brother was more on the interior part of the house. So it's like he never got affected. Mm. Uh, and my parents were too. Ironically enough, it's like, and again, they didn't know. And that's why it's like, I want to educate people on knowing right. and what to look for, you know, with mold and asbestos and everything right. like that. Right. We have to be careful with. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and to your point, actually, you're absolutely right. Um, a lot of the homes on the East Coast, and I found this out a couple years back. It caused me to actually start looking at the envelope of the home as it relates to the insulation because I noticed that my parents had the most, um, they had the highest electric bill on the street. And mm. so I'm like, what's going on with that? So when I dug into it and at the time they were actually renting the home that they were in. And what I found mm. out was, was that first of all, the home was built like in about 1933 or so. So mm. of course, you know, the different types of insulation standards have changed dramatically from them. But unless you, you had new windows, unless you had, you know, at least new exactly. windows, at the very least new windows, you were losing so much heat. On top of that, they had a very, very old furnace. So all these things were just <laughs> causing right. a lot of problems in terms of their bills, not so much their health. But as much as in their case, it was their bills. But yeah, mm -hmm. that is the only thing about some of the houses from the East Coast that I noticed is that they're so some of them are so old that they're not caught up to date in a lot of cases in the envelope. But with that said, um, I wanted to go to because I find this very interesting. So you started off with insul the insulation of the home because of the health problems. And from there you somehow pivoted into going deeper with interior design now what point what point did you decide that you wanted to turn that into a career right because so when i studied because i have a bachelor's in interior design and as i was studying you know i felt like there was something i don't know missing within within what i was studying so i was like I want to really help people and educate people, you know, and it's not just about the product, but it's like about the quality. So then when I found Feng Shui, I was like, okay, you know, this is an ancient, ancient art. So I was like, okay, let's go that direction and give people more of an education on how and where to put their energy on uh, how to use it better. So hmm. I'm sorry, did I answer your question? I, mean, I believe you did. So it sounds like it was more of an evolutionary type of a process that led you yeah. into feng shui from interior design. Now, but I think the question was when, at what point did you decide to turn into oh, make it a career into a career? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I guess, but Hey, but since I was a kid, I really knew I wanted to do interior design. I mean, not a lot of people know that when you're like 10 or 15, like I was like, really adamant about i really just i just love like i was like that freaky kid that just loved organizing her room like really? yeah i was like a 10 year old or an eight year old like i always kept it really right. clean and organized who knows because maybe i take after you know my mother in that respect and she was always having a clean house or whatever so but anyway i just always liked that so i was attracted to that and just you know and yeah so it was an evolution of figuring out what's going to work for me and my beliefs and how I can educate people on how I can, what, what value I can give them, you know? Okay. So yeah, I would say, um, probably when I was 25, roughly, okay. um, so right out of college, you know, I was like, yeah, what if I can make this a career? How wonderful. Um, right. so yeah. And, and I, as, uh, as things evolved, you know, I got more into the art too, because I figured, okay, that's, a whole package you know for people i can help you in your home you can declutter your space you know give you a fresh new look and then how about personalized artwork you know what a great combination what a great package for everyone and i'm definitely going to get into that too because i do have some questions about that but i'm curious now what school did you go did you actually go to 
I went to, well, I went to uh, Newbury College first for my undergraduate uh, that was interior design. And then I, I kept uh, going on t- and I got actually a certificate in uh, residential design specifically. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, I'm going to finish out because actually I first studied uh, fashion merchandising because when you're in high school, you know, you're not really, you go to those, uh, you know, the events to, to try to figure out what your major right. is going to be. And, right. And they don't really advise you, you know, you don't, you don't know. Cause so at first, like I said, when I was a kid, I just loved organizing, placing things, you know, placing things in the right order or whatever. And right. that happened to be fashion merchandising was the closest, but it wasn't, you know, I was never interested in the fashion. I was more interested in the design. <laughs> and right. anyway, and that's why I was like, okay, let me get into interior design. That's the direction I want to go. And so, yeah, I had, I, but I'm a Sagittarius, so it's like, I love learning and just trying everything. So it's like, you know, in the beginning, I just wanted to try, try, try to make everything a whole, I would say. So, um, yeah, so I have my bachelor's in interior design and sorry, <laughs> I, I know I go off on tangents. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. You, you've answered the question so far. I was asking okay. what school I was asking what school you had gone so, to. Yeah, I went to Newbury College, and then I went to the Art Institute. Thank you. Oh, you went to Art Institute? Okay. Yeah, the New England Art Institute in Boston. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I actually, I, I like Art Institute. I've, I've visited. I've never actually went there, but I've visited a couple of times back in the day, and they had a really good program for what I could see. Well, uh, and they're all throughout the country, yeah. Yep, yep. So... I'm a little curious and we're about to get into some deeper questions in terms of your approach. Um, But before I do that, I wanted to know a little bit about your training with Eddie Olson and the Eddie Olson studio. And what I found interesting was the 10, is it 10,000 blessings? And what does that mean? What is that about? Right. That was some training I've done uh, with Ben Shui. Mm-hmm. With, and then her company just means 10,000 blessings. Just There's many blessings that she endeavors with, with Feng Shui. I learned with her, but I, I feel like I take more of a modern approach with Feng Shui. And I mm-hmm. really want to focus more on the green, sustainable products. Mm-hmm. And just, again, like just educating people on how to make a, a more sustainable lifestyle mm-hmm. uh, with, within the products they use. So... Yeah, it's really important to me is to, to like reduce, reuse and restore. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, reducing, like decluttering and reusing, like reusing your furniture, maybe going to antique stores and just reusing what you already have. So basically I'm giving you a good value and, you know, making it affordable for people to work with me. Right. Um, restoring your whole your whole self, you know, I, I call it like I'm well, I'm a holistic design consultant. I would say, um, yeah. And so I can give you a kind of like a mind, body, space cleanse. Right. Right. Now I'm a little curious now, is there a correlation between, I've got to figure out how to ask this question. Um, is there a correlation between the, the function of the home as it relates to, let's just say, um, the materials being used to insulate the home or to even create the home. Is there a correlation between that and any of the principles of feng shui? Well, yes. So, you know, feng shui is an ancient art and it's all about the energy we utilize within our space. So, you know, the elements like fire, water, earth, metal, Mm -hmm. um, wood, yeah, so I would say, you know, again, it's like decluttering your space, decluttering your mind, working on that, getting rid of um, floor, um, like the fluorides and the benzene and the different synthetic materials. And, and that's uh, getting rid of all of that is part of the whole process of Feng Shui because your energy is going to be lacking, you know, if you, if your space is toxic basically so yeah i would say i'm doing it more of a modern approach so maybe someone else with feng shui might not say that but i'm kind of 
combining the two to right. give you a whole body a whole body mind space experience gotcha that's interesting okay yeah so- it's a completely different approach like i feel like nobody's done this and there's not a lot of design firms that really focus on green sustainable you know products there might be like i don't know the big commercial ones but there's not a lot that will help you individually in your mm-hmm. residential home Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm like, that's why I'm on my own, like have my own business because I was, I was looking like in the beginning, you know, after right. high, um, high school, college, you know, looking for a job and it's like, I couldn't find a job. So I was like, I guess I'm going to have to create my own concept. Right. So people right. again can be educated and understand a better way of living. Right, right, right. Yeah. And you know, just for our audience members that may not exactly know what feng shui is i don't want to make any assumptions um can you explain really briefly as to just what feng shui actually is right so feng shui actually means wind water and it's an ancient chinese art that goes back like 700 bc like it's just completely ancient i happen to use the bagua map and so it's just this square map and it actually points out different areas Um, within your space to give you like better wealth so because in the again back when um like the cavemen days you know they would be hunting and then they would have to put their wealth and they put it in the far i think it was the far um north corner of like your your home so because again you don't know when you're going to get your wealth or something so you're basically hiding it so that's why there's certain areas in your home you should have things facing or have things, you know. So, like, again, like, um, family is, like, in the center. Mm. And then, like, yeah, and then love is on, um, like, the north, maybe, like, the south side. So, um, yeah, so everything has to be kind of encompassing. Okay, okay. So, let me ask you this. What, and this want to shift a little bit to talking a little bit about your artwork. Um, Because I've seen your artwork. Your artwork is amazing. I'm actually a fan definitely of the um, abstract work that I've seen you do. I really like some of the paintings um, in your gallery in that area. That's just because I like abstract, but um, some really cool stuff. And what I'm curious of is what artist, if any, do you feel inspires you most when it comes to your artwork? I would say Monet. I just love his water lilies. I love, (laughs) it's funny because I love, well, he's more impressionist. I would say I'm more realistic, but I kind of bounce between impressionist to realism. Mm. But I also, I don't know, I just love abstract too. (laughs) I just, it's like, again, I guess with my interior design and my art, and it's, it's like molding the two together, like the form and the function, but the spirituality and the, mm. yeah, so that's what I say in my website, you know, how I'm just, you know, the whimsical lines with structure, you know, and trying to just really combine the two together, and that's uh, what you can get, but yeah, so def- I, yeah, so Monet and Monet, actually, I really get inspired by them. I guess they're landscapes, because mostly I started doing landscapes. Mm. Uh, and actually, I, then I, I read, um, I don't know why I'm fascinated with gorillas, but <laughs> I'm just really fascinated with uh, endangered wildlife. Like, mm. again, I think it incorporates my green, sustainable, like just being and protecting the earth, right. you know, and utilizing what we have on earth, you know, rather than you know, we're such a consumer, uh, you know, economy and we're always buying, buying, buying. And it's like, I want to utilize, you know, yeah, what we already have type thing. So care for the earth. So that encompasses the the wildlife. So anyway, it was funny because I was just reading Jane Goodall's bio and it was like 900 pages or something. And I got through that and I was like, oh my God, I'm inspired to, you know, paint some endangered wildlife. So I have a whole series of um, endangered wildlife that I've painted right after I was just touched by, you know, what she has done for 40 years of her research and how we're so connected, you know, with the, that, uh, the gorillas and stuff. So, yeah, but I think just wildlife because they're just so vulnerable, you know, and I just mm. want to give 
give a voice to them. And so I, so, so now what I've started to do is do more like abstract wildlife. I put, there's two new ones that I just finished. Um, one's called a loving bond and another one, I have an elephant, um, that you can see on my website. Um, yeah, but they're just like really bold colors. So they're more like the realism and the abstract together. So, I've seen the um, yeah. Yeah. I've seen the elephants. Nice. Um, so let me ask you this. Um, so what would you say best classifies your style? Best classifies my style. Um, well, I would say realism and it, it, that's so hard because it's like, again, I'm just combining realism with abstract and, and it's just really hard to pinpoint one, but I mean, that it's like, cause I want to give people what they need. So that's why I love just connecting with people individually and whatever they need. I just kind of want to mold and work, work with them. Um, if that makes sense. I can tell you my take on it. My take is it, it your style really seems kind of sort of three dimensional in your approach. And what I mean by that is pretty much what you've just said. You, I, I see you uh, uh, trying to fuse um, different elements from spirituality, like you said. Right. And I, I definitely see hints of minimalism. And then, of course, even in the abstract, and it's funny because some abstract is really abstract, but then there's some folks who actually do abstract in a structured way, which is what I sometimes like myself. It's weird, maybe because I'm a little, <laughs> a little weird in what I like, but I that's what I see from your work is that there's a combination of different elements of different things that I see you trying to convey through some of the paintings. And what I like about a lot of the work is a lot of it's, a very, no matter what you're painting, it's still simplistic to a degree. Thank it's, you. I appreciate that. I, there's dance. one that's called the geometric dance, mm. which I actually is very abstract, but I actually use like a measuring tape, you know, and c calculated everything out. Really? To, yeah, exactly. And, and uh. it's funny because I paint lots of blues and greens. I was kind of my go through my collection and I'm just like, wow, I paint lots of blues and greens. But that, mm -hmm. for me, those are calming, you know, colors. And because I've studied color theory and it's like, yeah, I, I can't do the reds and the oranges, like for me personally, you know, because it's like, I understand that's just wild, you know, and it's energetic or whatever. I'm already energetic. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, so I need the calming. So that's why I, I'm attracted to those blues and those greens. So I tend to go that direction. But the one that's a uh, geometric dance, I was like, I've noticed people, you know, are calling for the brighter colors. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try that. And this, right. and this painting is just like all orange, but then it's got, you know, some reds and blue, uh, excuse me, reds and yellows and stuff um, in it. But yeah, like I said, I used like, a, a protractor and a measuring tape and everything. And it, oh. it, it's cool. It's cool. Cause it was kind of like a, like an atom i was I, I think i was thinking at the time and so it's like this round shape in the center but then sort right. of like kind of like it's like energy just bouncing off structure i, I think i know the one you're talking about I, yeah i think i know which one yeah. you're talking about because i just had it up a little earlier today and those were actually a couple of the ones that i actually like myself and those were the abstracts right 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 exactly okay. Yeah. And that's why it's funny you say that because that's what I kind of somehow I, I get the sort of uh, ordered chaos. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a great of way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, right, right. There's like order in the chaos. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I get, I get exactly what you're saying there. So here's my other question. Now, you know, I, I think the concept of combining both art with interior design and especially with the feng shui which is why i keep saying i feel like there's a sort of a three-dimensional approach um it's an interesting concept it's an interesting way even to possibly approach and this is a question for you when you're painting or you're doing an interior design project let me put it like that right and someone has some type of preference for their artwork 
how does that work? I'm just curious, like how do you go about, what's the process of how you go about deciding for a client um, what you're going to give them in terms of a painting, um, how you're going to design their room or their home. How do you approach that? Do you have a framework or methodology that you follow for each client or is it work some other type of way? Well, sure. But I mean, the biggest thing is I have to get to know each individual client. So I just have to do my research. So it's really that, I mean, I'm so sorry. That's a hard question to answer just because it's about that individual person. And so once I can know and learn about that individual person that I could basically do my research and then I come back to them, you know, and give them what they need, you know, because, and so with Feng Shui, I mean, it can solve so many concerns in someone's life. I mean, with their career or with their relationship or with their health, you know, so if someone is suffering with their health or someone says, I just can't get the boyfriend or girlfriend that I really want, you know, I could use those methods of Feng Shui to kind of assist and help them because a lot of what's going on is probably within your space. You know, your home is your sanctuary. So if you're not happy within your space and some people don't even realize it, you know, so it's like, I just got to get into that home and then I can tell you, I can tell you, wow, you got too much fire, too many fire elements in the, you know, one place or too much metal in one place. You know, I know metal actually, the more metal you have, the more detailed you can be. So it's like if you work in an office kind of environment, so maybe you need more metal. But, you know, but it, let's say if you're an artist, maybe you don't need as much metal as you have. You know, so right. it's really about getting into that space to then help them, assist them in what they want. It, it's interesting. I did um, a commission painting for someone, these abstract manatees. Mm-hmm. And it was fascinating because she, I told her, I was like, yeah, don't put that in your bedroom, you know, cause there's going to be a lot of energy. Cause it's like this water, it's well, there are manatees in the ocean. So there was a lot of movement there. Right. Mm-hmm. And she said she had a hard time sleeping and she, cause I was like, yeah, don't put that there. You know, it's, it's not going to work for you. And sure enough, it's like, she, she actually put it there, you know, in her bedroom or whatever. And she told me, she's like, yeah, I was having a hard time. She's like, I had to move that. And I was like, yeah, like you need to have that in like a living room space or something like that. Cause that's just too much. Like, for example, your water element is again, movement. So you wouldn't have that in a sleeping environment, you know? So again, people Uh don't realize it. Yeah. They don't realize it when you're just putting some painting up, you just think, Oh, pretty colors or whatever. But if you do the research behind it, you're like, Oh, okay. That's why, you know, I'm possibly not sleeping well or what, you know, but there's so many, of course, there's just so many elements to why maybe we're not sleeping well. So So that brings me to this question. Now, I was going to ask you this a little bit later, but now I'm going to ask you now because we kind of progressed into this. So does the space influence your artistic direction or does the person that owns the space determine what you do? And let me make sure I'm asking this right, because like, for instance, right, if I said to you, okay, hey, Gina, um, I want to be able to relax in this room right so based off of what you said there seems to be certain things as it relates it for no other reason uh than just uh uh, feng shui there's certain things that are kind of finite like it's not about what i want it's the energy that it's going to bring and if i might let's for instance you know i might like the color yellow but the mm-hmm. ye- yellow might be counterintuitive to the actual feeling that I want to feel in the room, sounds like. I mean, as an example. So right. what I'm trying to understand is when you're working with a client, does the outcome that they want influence what you do and what you put into the room or what type of artwork you'll create for that space? Or... Do you just give them what they want? <laughs> well, again, it, it's it's like interviewing them, you know, and figuring out what they need. So, and the funny thing is they, again, might not know what they need. So that's why I have to then really <laughs> delve deep right. in their, like, their whole psyche and figure it out. And that's whole, the, the mm. whole decluttering, man, it's, it's in the brain. 
because uh, we're trying to figure out why you're holding on to things you know what is right. going on why why we have what we have um you know so that's just the beginning you know okay. stages and then once we can get through that you know then i can just be like and like again i said so the art should be the last the mm. last element you know sometimes right. people just want art and that's fine too right um but for a whole body experience i would say you know yeah let's declutter first and declutter the mind you know right. it's really about that and then physically so it's a physical emotional spiritual uh cleanse uh basically right and at the end it, once we can clear all that out then we can figure out what's going to work on your walls but you know it's interesting Col color theory is is fascinating it's just absolutely fascinating is you do you know why the the, the m mcdonald's is yellow I mean, we're attracted to these bright colors and we go to it and we don't even know why. We're just like, right. we're just drawn right. to it. Yeah. So, yeah. It's funny you mentioned that. That reminds me of something I learned one time that uh, McDonald's changed. Um, I found out that they would go for, I think, um, I think it was red. It used to be really red. The older McDonald's have a right. lot of red in the inside. Right. <laughs> and not only was... Well, but that the funny thing was, it would be red in the inside, and the seats were extremely uncomfortable, and you couldn't sit there longer than 15 minutes. And what I realized was, okay, this is on purpose. They're doing this to get me out of here so I don't stay too long. That what's funny is, as the years have progressed, I've noticed McDonald's now, they use a lot more earth tones. It's a lot more inviting. But at the same time, even though their, their furniture looks more comfortable, it's still uncomfortable. <laughs> they st it seems as though they're still trying to get you out of there, but mm -hmm. not in much as an overt way as they mm -hmm. used to do it. Which mm -hmm. really got me to thinking like, wow, there's a lot of science that goes into just the way a restaurant, especially a restaurant like McDonald's, is designed. You know, so many things we can't see that's happening right beneath the surface. So much. And you think about hospitals, why they paint all the walls blue mm. is calming. You know, you're, you don't, you want to be calm when you okay. go in, right? Because you're kind right. of like, oh my God, what's happening to me? Am I dying? Like, oh, so calming. <laughs> you know, or ocean colors or just like the sea or just, it's all dreamy. And right. I also learned why they don't have windows in grocery stores. It keeps you focused on the inside and it just right. keeps you buying, buying, buying. Yeah. So that's right. That's there's right. so much behind all of it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny. Interesting. Just don't think about it. <laughs> well, it's funny, you know, all that goes into, you know, people's buying behavior, but it's right. interesting. We don't really invest into our homes. We don't invest into our workspaces the same way. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to the last question of this section that I wanted to ask you about. So hypothetically speaking, and you can take your time with answering this question, because the topic of this show is going to be how to create the ultimate workspace. If you were dealing with a client, because I want the audience to get a feel for what their experience would be like to work with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you're working with a client, client's a business owner, the client's always kind of stressed out and they've got you know, just one room to do all of their business in. And they say to Gina, I just want to be able to feel focused and relax at the same time. Okay. What would you, what would it look like for, for a client to have a session with you with that being the, the context? Well, when it comes to your ultimate workspace, mm -hmm. for an example with Feng Shui, what I would tell them is first of all where is your desk positioned mm. and make sure your desk is in the power position uh so sometimes a desk could be against the wall or sometimes let's say the desk um you're walking in and you're you're facing backwards <laughs> like like you like you don't see so the energy is wrong let's say if your desk is facing whatever a window and then the someone's coming in and they you don't see them right away you're supposed to that's the whole concept you're supposed to see them right away so mm -hmm. you're in the power position 
Uh, so, I mean, that is just the first example or start to an ultimate uh, workspace, really, to keep that focus. Because, mm. again, like, let's say your desk is facing a window, then, oh, my gosh, you're just looking out the window and just dreaming, right? You're not, you're not <laughs> able to focus. Right. Yeah, you know? Then right. you see a bird, tweet, 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 and then it splats on the window. No. <laughs> right. no, it's a, but, yeah, so you really want it. Um, that's just the first first example. You'd want it to be facing your door and to see what who's coming in uh because again it's like it's like that energy you're always like uptight if you don't have your desk in the right position you, and you don't even realize it you're kind of like just you're going along working and the, but it's like what's behind me what's behind me you know and i think that's just the mm. the ancient art of what it was you know years thousands of years ago it's like mm. and so it really encompasses in modern times you know so in in those ways so yeah, but also decluttering. I mean, I did an office for um, a couple while ago that, gosh, their just desk was just cluttered with stuff, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, and their walls like were the wrong color and everything. So, so I think we had to clear out. We cleared out their desk first. Uh, mm -hmm. I gave them the right color, and also I was going to mention, you know, you want to make sure low VOCs in your paints. So that's something to really be uh, watching VOC? for. What, what's a VOC? Right. It's just basically voluntary like, compound. So just making sure you have low toxic paints. Okay. So there are places to go like Benjamin Moore and Sherman Williams. And they do, they do um, low toxic uh, VOCs in paints. Okay. So nowadays. Yeah. So yeah. And, yeah. Because it's funny because when we started talking about Houses. I was going to mention in the seventies. You know, they use the lead paint. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that was terrible, and that, that led to you know health issues um, for people, and uh, you know if they've been in that environment for many many years. But anyway, so yeah. So again, decluttering your space, positioning your desk. You know, having the right uh, color on the walls. You know, all of that makes for a great ultimate workspace. Okay. And that's just an example. I mean, I again, I'd have to go into detail with that individual person depending on right. what the situation is. Right, right. What they now, feel like they're not, you know, getting the most out of with, when it comes to their career. Now, you may have just answered this next question, but if anything else comes to mind, I'll just let you just kind of build on it. If not, don't worry about it. We'll just go to another question. But I was going to ask you next, uh, what are three powerful things that my listeners can do tomorrow to create peace and tranquility in their workspace? Um, so, yeah, maybe I answered that. Three powerful yeah, things. You have already you answered it in a different way. Um, and, and I guess what I, the reason why I said like this, because if their goal is peace and tranquility, if there's certain things that you know for a fact, like you mentioned the clutter. Oh, okay. So let's just keep it simple. And okay. so then, right, they could just, so they could do it themselves, for example. So that I would say, like I said earlier, yeah. So reducing, so declutter, start decluttering your space, start either organizing it or, you know, decluttering it. So, I mean, there's like organizing it gives you a sense of control, but like decluttering it, actually getting rid of certain things, you know, gives you a sense of freedom you know so it all depends like oh do you want do you need more control or do you need more you know freedom in your life but again to keep it simple they they could go with by just the reducing reusing and restoring right um so maybe yeah does that if they can think in those terms to get rid of what they don't need or lack you know that's lacking significance in their life um but also so reusing so once they kind of clear out what they don't need, mm -hmm. re, like reusing their furniture, for example, you could like simply repolster something or sand a chair down and, and lacquer it or whatever. Um, and yeah, so you can reuse that. And then restoring yourself would be, again, getting rid of all toxicities uh, in your home. So that could be cleaning products. Um, that could be like any synthetic materials, um, also plants, plants are so important to have in your home. So mm -hmm. I would say that helps for more oxygen flowing throughout your space. Mm -hmm. And again, we don't even think about that. And it, for me, it's like, 
I'm totally inspired with my art just when I go on a, like I said, a hike earlier in our conversation. That nature is just it's the oxygen, you know, you need it to, right. to carry on and get, and get your energy back. So, hmm. so definitely, yeah, re- reducing, reusing and restoring. I would say um, those are just the ultimate things to think about, to focus on, to go to the next step. Okay, awesome. So can you provide for some of the listeners some benefits that they could experience by utilizing your services um, in their homes or office spaces? What are some of the benefits? Because some folks, you know, I have to say that honestly, even myself, I haven't really thought about it that much. Not until, you know, meeting with you and discussing this with you. I really thought about how my my office actually feels. I think about it a little bit, but not that much. So, mm-hmm. and I'm curious, you know, and I'm quite sure that there's some type of deliverables that I'm not thinking of. You know, this is... I might be a little left, more, a little bit more left brain sometimes than I would like to think I am. But for those that may not be making that connection, what are some of the benefits that you can just kind of, you know, kind of spit out to them as to why right. they might want to consider using a service like yours, if not yours? Right. I would say to it could give them clarity, peace of mind, relaxation. It mm-hmm. can give them like a stronger relationship, you know, within their household with whoever their loved ones. Or, you know, it could help them find that love of their life, you know, if they're not married, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's definitely, um, yeah, benefits to everything I do, again, as a a holistic approach for your whole mind-body space cleanse, I call it. Um, Yeah, so, yeah, uh, less stress, you know, just certain things like that. So I would say uh, my best client would be someone that's kind of just stressed out you know worn out just tired and just trying to figure out what's going on you know because again it's probably within their space okay so my uh, coming in for closing here so a question for you is this do you have a special offer that you would like to give the listeners to the show today well i can give you a free consultation with any type of artwork any size awesome yeah all right. All right, guys, you heard that. <laughs> We're going to hold you to that. She has some phenomenal artwork, by the way, um, which actually is a couple pieces I'm really interested in myself. So hopefully I'll get to them before you guys do. But nevertheless... We're going to make sure we put that out there and add that into the, uh, the comment sections for the podcast and for the show. And the other question is, who should reach out to you to take advantage of your services? What's the ideal... Uh, situation that a person would be perfect for to give you a call i feel like a lot of entrepreneurs you know ones that have their own business because a lot of us that are have our own business are stressed out and trying to figure things out and like oh you know if it's just not working for them is like they like you know that i would be perfect for them you know anyone that again is just stressed out or or even maybe stay at home moms, <laughs> you know, the ones that are just batty with all their kids and they're just like, I need better, you know, some relaxation. I need to figure that out because, you know, I use different incense and different essential oils and, you know, that's a whole other ball game, but you know, different, different, yeah, things I could help them with to relax and kind of regain their energy. Um, so yeah, moms, ent- entrepreneurs, uh, maybe like yoga studios, maybe like health studios, mm. uh, places mm. like that. Definitely could use my services, I would think. And I'm just curious, do you know by chance, like what, this may be a difficult question for you. If you don't have to answer, it's all good. But I'm just curious, like, do you know, like the ROI, like the return on the investment that some folks may be able to experience on this? Because I could definitely see where like productivity increasing, you know, more efficiency and time management when you feel more but i'm curious do you know if there's any roi bottom line numbers that businesses can sure. so in general like for interior designers well let's say we're doing a kitchen remodel i mean there actually is a 90 percent uh return on investment for like a kitchen remodel or let's say like an 80 percent return on investment for like roofs wow. For like what I do personally, I would say it's a hundred percent return on investment for them because 
what it is is investment in themselves. Right. You know, and really helping themselves get through whatever is kind of lacking in their life. Right. I mean, that's where the whole feng shui comes into play, where they could get more balance. Right. Balance in their life is so important. Right. Now, I can say this much. I can say this from my personal experience with um, putting some time and energy into, like I said before, I hadn't really thought about it much, but that's probably not really true, especially because of what I do. I actually have put probably more thought into it than a lot of folks probably do because when I'm doing this show, my background and all this other stuff, it actually matters. Like I have to, I've literally had to think through my background and because i come from the entertainment industry i actually understand a lot of the psychological um implications of what your background looks like even on webcam so mm -hmm. you know i personally put a lot of energy into trying to create a certain type of feel myself so i can say this folks for anybody who is like on the fence and like the trying to determine whether that this is something you should invest in I can say hands down, if you spend near, anywhere near as much time as like someone like me spends in, in their office, and I probably spend at least a good 40, 50 to 60 hours or more in my office every week, if not, right. it could even be more than that. Sure. Um, it does matter. <laughs> Cause you drive yourself crazy. And I, and I can say that the clutter does really help with my mindset it does help a lot with you know um what i what i feel but also how well and how long i'm able to concentrate and focus mm -hmm. i've noticed it matters um mm -hmm. my lighting matters not just for the for the camera but it matters for me and my focus because i have adhd so i use my lighting to right. help me to focus i've got a really big bright light that my wife hates she doesn't like to come in here because it's too bright for her but for me i use that light when i need to pick up my energy and get something done sure. because this light will actually almost put me to sleep <laughs> i'm gonna say you have intimate light right now it's a, it's a really nice setting yeah I, I have like you know i use i'm using warm lighting i always use warm lighting because of my complexion um mm -hmm. for when i'm shooting webcam stuff but mm -hmm. when i have to do work i've got like these big led mm -hmm. in here and it really helps with my energy so you know i think what you start you start to become sensitive about these things <laughs> when you spend a lot of time in your office so mm -hmm. i can definitely say guys this matters if you want to increase your productivity you want to increase mm -hmm. your efficiency you want to be able to work for longer periods of time without needing to stop putting that time into your office and getting help yeah. having gina to yeah. reach out to you it will probably change your game because when you like when oh. you work you know it, it means it's different it's, it's completely mm -hmm. different to like your workspace so mm -hmm. That's my little shameless plug there for Gina because I think honestly what she's doing is phenomenal. Now, I know nothing about Feng Shui, so I might have to call on Gina for a little help myself because I could always spruce up my energies. So with that said, that's why I love what she's doing, guys. So anyway, last question for you. How can the audience get in contact with you? Sure. Give me a call or an email anytime. So my website has my uh, phone number on there. Sorry okay, what's your website? Confusing. What's My your website, website address? GinaMarieInteriors.com Okay, and that telephone number? Well, the telephone number, and sorry if it's confusing, I'm from the East Coast, like I said, so it is a 617 <laughs> number. <laughs> but I figure this day and age, you know, everybody's from anywhere, That's right? True. So That's it true. doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, so it's a 617-953- Four right. seven five one. Awesome, awesome. Well, that concludes. Oh, one more thing, guys. Gina's actually going to do a ten-minute educational presentation for us. Um, the information for that will be attached 
to the bottom of this uh, video if you're watching on YouTube. And if you listen to the podcast, it will be in the show notes. Okay? So definitely check out Gina's 10-minute little educational presentation that she has put together for you guys. And give her a call and use her services because she's awesome. All right. Well, guys, take care. God bless. This has been Mayo Best and Gina Marie Studios for the Bliss Business Development Show. And I will see you guys on the other side. Bye-bye.